temper. Sylvan at his own seven. Has a couple of blockers brought down at about the 20-yard line. Jeff Thomason on the stop. And Trent Dilper and the Tampa Bay offense to take the field for the first time. This is certainly a critical year for the 24-year-old Trent Dilper. He's had his ups and downs in his first two years. Last year, first time he was the full-time starter. But they're hoping for consistency out of Dilfer. Again, only 24 years old. They do not have Eric Rett, their workhorse running back. Running back by committee now. Mike Allstott, the rookie, and Jerry Ellison are the two setbacks. Dilfer goes to Ellison, and Ellison may be a yard or two before being brought down. Now let's take a look at the Tampa Bay offense. Again, Dilfer hoping to come back from last year. The four TDs and 18 interceptions, a disaster for Dilfer. The offensive line, the change, Scott Adams for Ian Beckles at the right guard. Beckles hurt himself the other day. Riesenberg, the former Giant. And the backs and receivers all start the rookie out of Purdue. Hawkins, Larry Ryan said the other wide receiver to start, and Jackie Harris, the underrated tight end. Two-yard pickup on the first place, so a second and eight. That's Larry Ryan's in motion. Ellison, another call. Broke a tackle. Gets up to about the 26-yard line. It'll be third and about four. Let's take a look at the Green Bay defense as Brian Williams makes the initial tackle there. One of the best defensive lines in all of pro football, the great Reggie White. Former Buccaneer Santana Dotson, their big free agent signing at the tackle. Six defensive backs have come into the game, including rookie Tyrone Williams, number 37. On a third and four, they're expecting a lot from him. Packers led the NFL last year. Their defense did in three downs and out. Dilfer, his first pass, fires. It's complete and good for a first down. Courtney Hawkins on the reception up to about the 33. The rest of the defense for Green Bay, Brian Williams, what a camp he's had in his second year. George Kuntz now in the middle, and Wayne Simmons, the other linebacker. The corners, Newsom and Evans. Eugene Robinson, the former Seattle Seahawk, along with Leroy Butler. There's Newsom. They love what he brings to the table week in and week out. So first and ten for Tampa Bay. Dave Moore, the tight end, this time in motion. All stop the rookie, his first carry in the NFL, and he stopped pretty much at the line of scrimmage. George Kuntz quickly in on the tackle. Yeah, Mike Allstott was a second-round draft choice for him, the kid out of Purdue. He was a leading rusher in, in Purdue's history. And he's a guy that the coaching staff really likes. Now, to fill the void left by Eric Rett, you know, there's going to be running back guy by committee. They have five of them back there. But Tony Dungy said he really likes the Allstott kid, and he thinks they want to see what he can do. He's a big guy. He can pound the ball. And they're going to try to get him the ball in his hands a little bit more often today. Picks up two yards on his first carry of the NFL, so a second and eight. Immediately in the line of scrimmage and thrown for a loss. Wayne Simmons right there in on the stop. Boy, that was a nice play by Wayne Simmons, number 59. You're going to take a look here. He comes from the right of your screen. Now, the thing about Wayne Simmons is the guys up front, the tackles, see Gilbert Brown and Santana Dotson stuff it in there? See, they're eating up all the blocks up front. And that gives the room for the linebackers to scrape free. And that's what they have in this linebacking crew. They're not big guys back there with Coons and, and, and Simeons, but they're fast guys. And they can hide them back there behind all the beef up front. Loss of two, so third and ten. Leroy Thompson, the lone setback now. Four wide receivers have come on for Tampa Bay. Dilfer facing a rush. Quick pass. Incomplete and intercepted. Mike Pryor with the pick. And the turnover, Green Bay will take it. Dilfer, who threw 18 interceptions last season, throws one early here in the first quarter. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a nice throw by Trent Dilfer. It's a shame that he has to get off on that kind of start because, look, he puts the ball right on the money, right in Alvin Harper's hands. 
But you know what the thing of it is? It's a, that's a nice play, heads up play uh, reaction by Mark Pryor, Mike Pryor. But the thing of it is, it's been wet out there. That ball's wet. It's been on the grass. It's on the field. I mean, that ball was obviously wet because Alvin Harper couldn't get a grip on it. Pryor, the interception. Newsom with the hard hit as Harper was trying to hold on to the ball. So first to 10, ball at the Tampa Bay 37. Green Bay to take over. Far up throwing on first down. Throws it out of the backfield. And it's complete. Antonio Freeman, now the starting wide receiver. Starting lineup for Green Bay. 28-year-old Favre, MVP in 1995, but a difficult offseason with the rehab stay because of the addiction to painkillers. He says he's in great shape. He says don't bet against him to have another great year. Four-yard pickup on the Freeman reception. Bennett and Henderson are the setbacks. So second and six. Favre again to throw. He's got Freeman again. And Freeman gets the first down to the 24. Charles Dimry and Lonnie Martz on the stop. The offensive line for Green Bay. And this is the one question mark for them. Gary Brown starting at left tackle. Aaron Taylor. Pretty healthy right now with the left guard. Winters, Timberman, and Dotson. Now the backs and receivers, Bennett and Henderson. Freeman, Brooks coming off that great year. And the pro bowler, Mark Jamera. First and ten for Green Bay. Off the Dilfer interception. This time up the middle, William Henderson. And Henderson gets a few before he is stopped. One of the things Mike Holmgren said in our meeting with him is that, hey, he wanted to get a running game going. You know, a running game takes time for all those five linemen to click. And, you know, they put Henderson in there, the, you know, the big fullback, and they took out Levins. And they're going to use Levins more on third down situations with his speed. But Henderson's a guy that can pound the ball. And, you know, he, when they get down here inside the red zone, that's what you want your offensive line to do. You want them to take over the game. Bennett and Henderson, the setbacks, on a second and seven. Far, quick throw. Chimera's got it. Cuts across very close to a first down. Lonnie Martz on the tackle. Perhaps just a little bit short. There's Mark Chimera, you know, and you're going to see a lot of the double tight end stuff. It wasn't in there that play, but they got two good ones. He and Keith Jackson, of course. And what you're going to see right here is just a little naked bootleg. He has no protection. Brett rolls out the back door and a little flat run, a little drag run there by the tight end. And, hey, you know, you have a pickup of four or five yards. That's great stuff, and that's what the that's what this West Coast offense is. Pick your way down the field. Third and less than one. Dorsey Levins has come into the game. Two tight ends set for Green Bay. Levins hit at the line of scrimmage. Second effort. Perhaps got him that first down. Hardy Nickerson on the tackle. Their leading tackler since he's been here at Tampa Bay. Hey. 31st birthday is today Hardy Nickerson happy birthday and he wanted a few people to join in the celebration with him there's a guy that'll just come up and knock you down you're gonna see him right here fill this hole now you know I was talking about the offensive line they need to take over down here see they don't get any movement up there they get stuffed at the line of scrimmage and Hardy Nickerson with a big fill there for a no gain so they'll measure this one in the second effort from Levins who lost the job as the starting fullback to Henderson and he picks up the first down Says he wasn't happy about it, but he's not going to let it affect his play on the field. Let's look at the Tampa Bay starting defense. And it features a very young offensive line. We'll show it to you in just a second. Well, you know, he's the veteran, Hardy Nickerson. One of the things about this Tampa defense, they're not good in many categories, but one category they are good in is red zone defense and points allowed. When they get down here, this group gets stingy. And Tony Dungy is going to see to it that they get even stingier. First and ten. Far, plenty of time, throws, incomplete, Bennett in the vicinity. Derek Brooks with some coverage in the area. Young offensive line for the Buccaneers with rookie first rounder Reagan Upshaw. The other tackle, second year man Warren Sapp, along with Cole Pepper and Curry. The strength of this team, the linebackers, one of the best, Hardy Nickerson. Brooks really coming on, and the veteran, Lanny Martz. And the secondary new face here, Todd Scott, at strong safety, played for Tony Dungy in Minnesota. Second down and ten. Don Beebe, the third wide receivers come into the game. Levin's also back in. Dorsey Levin's quickly hit at the line of scrimmage. Warren Sapp right there to make the tackle to slow down Levin's. 
Well, you could see it on the on the first play. You know, when Brett had some pressure on him, he threw a poor pass, and they didn't get it. Then it was second and ten, and they tried to create out of that formation a passing down. Three wide receivers, one running back. So they think that Tampa's thinking pass, and they don't. They give it to Levins, and he comes up the middle. But there's no go right there. There's Warren Sapp to make the big play. Sapp, the former first-round pick, expects to play better for Tony Dungy. The defensive guru, now the head coach. Third and ten. Far quick pass, Robert Brooks. Brooks cuts inside and very close to the first down. Looks a little bit short. Brad Culpepper and Nickerson in on the stop. You know, that's one thing about Mike Holmgren. You know, he's had so much success with all the short passes all over the place that when the run isn't there, he literally just crinkles up the paper and throws it down. He's not going to come back to it. If he can pick up four or five yards through the quick passes, he's going to take that. So Mike Holmgren says fourth and one, let's kick it. Chris Jackie in his eighth year. Jackie, the tenth most accurate kicker in NFL history. This is a 23-yarder. And Green Bay on the board. Off the Dilfer interception, a deflection. Green Bay marches down and gets the first three points of the season. Just over six and a half remaining. First quarter in Tampa. The Packers go on top. His second kickoff. Hendrick does it. Sylvan's going to bring it out. The rookie not a lot of room and chase out of bounds. At the 22, Corey Dowden runs him out of bounds. Hot one in Tampa, 3 0 Green Bay. Kickoff, you see right there, points to his head, looks at Nilo Sylvan and says, Hey, you got to think. You have to think about these things. When, you're, when you take a kick four yards deep in the end zone, stay in there. We could have got the ball to 20. Instead, they're getting it at the 13 uh, yard line. And, you know, it's opening day, and here's a rookie guy, and he had some success against Miami. He returned a punt for a touchdown. He was thinking he could get another one out here today. you got to be smart. Dungy said most of the rookies unaware of the difference in intensity between regular season and preseason. Rude awakening for many. Allstock gets the handoff, knocked behind a line of scrimmage, then taken out at about the 13. Santana Dotson, the initial hit to slow him down. And you talk about key players as Allstock gets up their defense this year yeah you know they need a big pass rush and movement guy in there and they get that from Santana Dotson he's very active in there and he has a little grudge match going here today against his old teammates you know he said they gave him a bad rap they said I can't play the run he goes the truth is I was out there playing hurt with a broke hand I was giving everything I could and he wants to show him that hey he can't play the run he was in the backfield on that play second down and eight two tight ends in the game Dilfer throws complete Jackie Harris up to the 24 he's got a first down 10 yard pickup for the former Packer Leroy Butler on the tackle yeah and this is a guy they've got to get into their offense see Jackie Harris there to the right of your screen okay watch the release see there's a blitz here coming by Simmons and Jackie just comes out and he knows it's a blitz so he cuts his route short and he's wide open and Trent Dilfer sees the blitz and finds him that was a great read on the part of Trent Trent Dilfer finding Jackie Harris with Eric Rett, the holdout, Horace Copeland, their best receiver, out with an injury. Harris really is the main offensive weapon, or the number one. They've got to get him into the plan more often. So first and ten. Jerry Ellison whacked hard, and he fumbled the ball. Hackers signaling that they have it. Still no word from the officials yet that they're sorting things out. Sean Jones says it's Green Bay ball, and it's official. Hackers get another turnover. Fritz Shermer, the defensive coordinator, pumped with his defensive start. An excellent field position once again. Reggie White, apparently the one to pounce on the ball. Watch the fill there. You know who made that stuff? That was Brian Williams, number nine, number 51. He's the guy that had the great training camp. He took the fullback and ran him right back into the play. You're going to see to the right of your screen. Watch him just jack that whole thing up. He stuffs the play. Ellison runs into the back of Allstock. The ball pops out, and it's a turnover. And one of the things they stressed, Fritz Shermer stressed, this year we need more turnovers. Last year they were minus five in the giveaway-takeaway ratio. They just couldn't get enough takeaways. First and ten at the Tampa Bay 27. Dorsey Levens has a hole, scampers through, and he fumbles the football. Picked up by Antonio Freeman. 
And Freeman taken down at the one-yard line by Melvin Johnson. Wild sequence of events. A 26-yard gain. Not the diagram play, but it works. Oh, no, are you kidding me, Mike? They drew it up like that. <laughs> Watch the run by Dorsey Levins. He's going to take the handoff, find an opening, and then he gets popped right there by Hardy Nickerson. The ball comes up. But then they hit Tony Freeman. What awareness. He's closing in there, trying to come down and make a block to help his partner out. And then the ball pops out. He sees it and grabs it and picks it up, takes it to the one-yard line. Good heads-up play by Antonio Freeman. Melvin Johnson saves a touchdown for now. Two tight ends, ball on the one. First and goal. Far. Touchdown, Keith Jackson. And the Packers taking advantage of the Buccaneers' turnovers. First the interception, then the fumble, and Green Bay is up 9-0. Well, there's a heck of a series of, of things that occurred there, but one of the things you can't do that Tampa Bay has done the last two possessions is turn the ball over. When you turn the ball over in your territory and give it to a high-powered offense like the Packers, you can only expect that. Jackie on for the extra point. And Green Bay with a 10-0 lead. Keith Jackson played nine games last year with the Packers. Had a great camp and off to a great start. First quarter. Catches the one-yard TD pass from Brett Favre. Green Bay's up 10-0. You know, Keith Jackson was out of football last year. He got traded up there. Didn't want to report to Green Bay. Sat out half the season, came in. And he said, look at him. Look at him smiling. This is a whole new attitude of Keith Jackson. He loves it in Green Bay. Jackie, very busy early on. Nilo Sylvan, one yard deep, as a hole, Sylvan now cuts around, got a little room to run, Jeff Thomason runs him out of bounds, but not before, a 36 yard return from Sylvan. Cody Dungy likes the way the rookie learns. Yeah, well, he told him once, he said, think about it, you know, and, and he bounced back, you know, he took it, and he, look at the skills he uses as well. I mean, here's a guy, he wants to go out there and prove, hey, coach, I'm sorry. You know, I messed up, and I know I'm young, but I'm going to show you I, 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 I belong out there. That's a nice return, and it gives them their best field position they've had today. One of 23 new faces for the Buccaneers. Sylvan returned to punt during preseason for a TD, a 91-yard scamper. They love what he can do on special teams. First and 10, good field position for the Buccaneers at their own 36. Jerry Ellison. This time, backs in, maybe a yard or two. Ellison, who fumbled the last time he had the football. Right now, let's go to a McDonald's game break. Let's return to James Brown at our Fox Television Center. All right, Mike. Warren Moon was out in the first half with an injured ankle. Backup quarterback Brad Johnson is in. 1-10 left in the game. Look at that 31-yard strike to Chris Carter. And the Vikings win it, 17-13 over Detroit. Back to Tampa Bay, Mike Breen and Bill Moss. Thanks, JB. NFC Central rivalries are already in week one. Dilfer on a play fake. Fires complete. Courtney Hawkins gets up near midfield. First down, Buccaneers. They've actually moved the football a little bit, but the turnovers have obviously killed them. Yeah, you know, and Tony Dungy's offensive philosophy is very different from all the things he's done defensively. You know, he wants to get a ground game going. He, he said that, you know, in the 70s, the Steelers won it on the ground, and then Dallas and Washington, you know, through, through the course of history, you have to have a running game, and he's trying to get that today. And then he said you need big play, big play wide receivers. And right there, he got it out to Dawkins and picked him up the first down. Dilfer to Ellison across midfield. Santana Dotson gets him down low. So Jerry Ellison's going to have to pick up a lot of the slack. Eric Rett, who has a contract, did not report, wanted it renegotiated. It's gotten a little nasty at times, but he is not here, and it's running back by committee, including Ellison. Ellison only in his second year in the NFL out of Tennessee Chattanooga last year. Only 26 rushes the entire season. Had a very impressive yards per carry number at 8.4, but overall he's very green. Perhaps not the wise thing to say when you're playing the Packers. Second and eight, Dilfer to throw again. As the pressure, intercepted, no, he dropped it. George Kuntz had it and lost it as Dilfer faced some severe pressure that time. 
Well, the strength of the Green Bay Packers is their defensive line. You know, that's everything that's coming out of Green Bay. And the two guys inside are just phenomenal. See the little stunt they run there? They run a little stunt inside, and that frees up Sean Jones. Sean Jones just beats his man as, as the two tackles run a little stunt, and he's right in Trent Dilfer's face. And then, you know, that causes a bad throw, and then Coons just couldn't hang on to the interception. Third and eight, four wide receivers into the game, including Carl Williams. Leroy Thompson is the setback. Thompson has it. He's got the first down and more. Leroy Thompson down to the 39-yard line. The six-year veteran who's played with the Chiefs, the Patriots, and the Steelers. Having a lot of room to run. Yeah, well, what happened there was well, it was third and long, obviously, and the Packers saw it was going to be a pass. So they, they had some success with the pass rush, the stun inside, so they tried it again. But they ran the ball, and they ran the ball right to where they were trying to run a hole there. You see Leroy Thompson with a nice pickup and a first down, giving him pack to the Buccaneers some good field position. Even little Courtney Hawkins throwing his weight around. First and ten. They put the ball at the 40. All stop the rookie. Good power all the way up to the 34. Looked a little like Larry Zonka, his idol on that one. When I look at Mike Allstott, the, the thing that comes to mind is Moose Johnson over in Dallas. But this guy, I think, is a better athlete than Moose Johnson. He has tremendous feet and great body balance. And, and you know, you see him there. He, he runs into the line of scrimmage, gets hit, and he just keeps those big legs turning, and he picks up four or five extra yards. Got great leg strength because of a training routine he does. He pushes a Jeep across a parking lot. That's part of his training. Second and four after the six-yard pickup. Allstott again. Cuts inside and appears to have the first down. George Kuntz and Gilbert Brown in on the stop. We know Allstott, you see, he's getting the workload here. And Eric Ritt being out, they need a guy to fill that shoe. And you see the fans, listen to him. They love him already. You know, he's he churning, his feet are churning, he's picking up yards against what's supposed to be one of the best defensive lines in the league. Or they're so touted, I'll tell you, if it wasn't for the turnovers, these defensive line and the run players are having their hands full. A little shy of a sellout, but the Buccaneer fans quite pleased. Their fifth round pick out of Baylor at 92, had a great rookie year, and then included 10 sacks. Also 71 tackles that rookie year. Signed as a free agent back in March in the offseason. Very durable. This has not missed a game in his NFL career as Tampa Bay gives it to Jerry Ellison, and he's cut down very quickly. Doug Evans with a strong defensive play. But Dotson again, vital in... Tampa Bay, but could be more of a key here in Green Bay. Well, you know, Fritz told us, uh, and Mike Holmgren said, that this guy is our season, quote, unquote. Now, that's a lot of pressure to put on a defensive tackle. But in essence, what it means is they need some movement inside because Reggie White's always drawing the double team. Well, now it's going to take a chance, get a chance to free Reggie and Sean up a little bit more when they're going to have their hands full with Santana, who's a good pass rusher. And, you know, the addition of Eugene Robinson in the backfield with that kind of pressure results in turnover. Loss of one on that play. Dilfer to throw under pressure. He's hit hard. And Trent Dilfer goes down for the first time as Reggie White and Sean Jones. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, uh, Reggie, you know, he drew the single protection on Doug Reisenberg, and there he turns the corner. He gets knocked down, keeps his feet, gets back up, and he's right in the lap of Trent Dilfer. There's Sean Jones with a rush. Let's see at the top of your screen there. That's Reggie White. You know, they, Ellison tries to jump down and cut his legs out, but Reggie White, you don't want to take Reggie's legs out. A lot of people have tried, and he always gets up or steps right over. Darius Holland has come in on the defensive line on a third and 12. Dilfer fires incomplete, intended for Carl Williams. Yeah. Craig Newsom right there with some excellent coverage. And a fourth down coming up. For the Buccaneers, Michael Eusted, who's got a very strong leg, will come out on the field. We're well, talking about that inside pass rush. Watch these two guys right there. Look at them. They're, Santana's drawing the double team, and then Darius Holland's freed up, and he goes right back into the lap of Trent Dilfer. And that's what they want. That's what they brought him in here for, to get that inside rush going. And you can see it was really effective right there. A 48-yarder, Eusted beat the Packers here in Tampa last year in overtime. His career long is 55 yards. Check that, 57 yards. And this one again from 48. And the Packers have called timeout. 
opening minute, second quarter, Green Bay with the lead. Beat Green Bay last year, but three game winners in the final minute or overtime. That was as long from last year. He made his final eight field goals of 95. Team record is 11 in a row, Steve Christie. Very strong leg. And in this case, very accurate as well. You, you know, for the Packers fans, you know, they, they've seen that before because it was a 47-yarder in overtime last year at December 10th that knocked Green Bay out of actually getting home field advantage throughout the playoffs. So Tony Dungy gets his first points as a head coach. Coming up on Fox on Saturday Baseball. DB's got it. Tries to get outside and cut down Tyrone Leggett with the tackle at the 15. You know, I was talking about the heat factor coming down. You can see when the Packers come down to Tampa Bay, when they come down before October 15th, they are 0-4 in Tampa. And then after October 15th, they're 6-1. So you don't think the heat plays a factor? Yeah, it's got to, I'm telling you. You see, they got the fans going over there on the home sideline. They're used to it. Even Brett Favre said yesterday, why are we playing in Tampa in September and playing in Green Bay later in the year? Why don't we switch it around? Yeah, he said the schedule makers don't like them. Of course, they have to go to Dallas again for the umpteenth time in a row. Toughest schedule in the NFL this year. Green Bay has it. First and 10, their own 15. Favre began to throw on first down. Pumps, fires downfield. Robert Brooks had it and dropped it. Todd Scott right there putting on the hit. The former Viking Pro Bowler. And he's down. Brooks took a shot. Watch the top of your screen. You're going to see. Well, that's Keith Jackson. But to the up top of the screen, right corner, is Robert Brooks. He was running down the sidelines. There he is right there. Boy, did he take a shot. And one thing Todd Scott can do, he can lay a hit on it. He came down from Minnesota. He was up in Minnesota with Tony Dungy. A pro bowler at one time, because he can come up, he can support the run and not lay a hit on you. You're not a great cover guy one to one. But boy, you saw right there that he just knocked him silly. Brooks, who had a great 1995 with 102 receptions, going to take his time getting up after this one. Green Bay leading 10-3. On his own, now sitting down. Second and 10. Far began to throw some pressure. Fires, it's complete across the middle. Keith Jackson, the tight end, up to the 30, a good for a first down. 15-yard pickup for Jackson. Yeah, Robert Brooks really took a blow two plays ago. Watch Todd Scott just lay the boom on him right there. I mean, he, he had the ball, but Scott just came in and just knocked him silly. You know, it's a hit like that that can really change the tempo of a game. You know, opening day stuff. I mean, Todd Scott's been around a long time, and he knows what it takes. And there he is. He's trying to change the tempo. Hacker's a little thin at wide receiver. As the rookie Derek Mays and Terry Mickens both injured. On the handoff, falling down Edgar Bennett. Gets up, goes the other way. And he's got some room. Bennett still with plenty of room. And Derek Brooks runs him out of bounds. Red Favre throwing a wild block on that play. 23-yard pickup on what appeared was going to be a loss. Yeah, you're going to see right here was a trap play. Aaron Taylor, he's a trap. And Eric Curry stuffs the whole thing up. Bennett goes down to the ground, but then he just gets back on his feet. Nobody touches him down, and he just out the back door. Look at the block there by Brett Favre on Dimry. I mean, Brett Favre, I mean, <laughs> what a competitor. He, he's a guy, he'll do whatever it takes. You, you, you'll you see throughout the course of the game. He is, without a doubt, the most aggressive quarterback I have probably seen play in the last 10 years. Sometimes Mike Holmgren thinks a little too aggressive. But a first down off the big pickup from Edgar Bennett. And Bennett nowhere to go that time. Warren Sapp quickly brings him down. Sapp, first round pick last year, called his rookie season horrible. Wanted to improve, and he's been active early on. We'll take a look to the right of your screen. You're going to see Sapp right there. Watch him jump around Aaron Taylor right over the left shoulder. They have him lined up in the three technique, so he's only playing half a man. And he steps in the backfield right around Taylor and makes the play. You know, Tony Dungy told us, he said, hey, you know, we got some young guys up front. And I'm going to need Warren Sapp to make plays, and I'm going to need Reagan Upshaw to make plays tomorrow. you got to make plays like that to slow down the pack. 
So no gain, a second and ten. Play action from far. Incomplete. Intended for Antonio Freeman. Favre had to get out of the pocket. So Freeman taking over the starting position that Mark Ingram started at the beginning of last season. They really like what Freeman can do. He's not going to catch your 80, 90 passes in the Brooks area, but a very effective receiver. Well, did you notice what happened there on that play, Mike? See, when you play Brett Favre, it's vital that you stay in coverage because when he scrambles out of the pocket, you know, that's when he's really dangerous. So there you saw the Bucks, and they practiced it all week, staying in coverage. Third down and 10. Favre looks and fires incomplete. Good coverage from Charles Dimry. Desmond Howard, the intended receiver. And fourth down coming up. Brooks right now is a question mark to come back after taking that shot to the head. Well, I'll tell you, you know, that shot to the head, I told you about changing the tempo of things. You know, I'm really impressed with what the Buccaneers are doing out here. At Tampa Bay, I think, thought that they came down here a little bit overmatched, a little bit better quality team overall than the Bucs. And even though they're up a little bit in score, the Buccaneers are showing that, hey, they can play with them. They just have to eliminate mistakes. Greg Hentrick with the punt. He had a couple blocked last year. Nobody goes for that time. Nilo Sylvan will let it go into the end zone. And a touchback. 47-yard punt for Hentrick. And Tampa Bay will take over. They trail 10-3. They'll have it at their own 20-yard line. Return. That hurts the Packers. Brooks, their main guy last year. 90 receptions his first three years combined. 102 last season. Just a spectacular year. That also included 13 touchdowns. Nine games of 100 yards receiving or more. But again, whether or not he returns, we'll have to see. Reggie White, the defense, going to have to come up big. First and ten for Tampa Bay. Dilfer looking downfield. Now settles for Allstott out of the backfield. Breaks the tackle. Still going. But he hits the first down up to the 30. What a second effort from the rookie from Purdue. 11-yard pickup. And the Buck fans love it, too. And I'm sitting up here, and I love it. I mean, I like to see effort like that. Here's a young kid out of Purdue, you know, as he's getting his first NFL game ever. And, and you know what's really impressive also? Trent Dilfer, he was looking downfield. But then he, he checked down. He did a smart thing. He checked down and threw the ball to his back that was open. And then, you know, Allstott, the big guy, just keeps his legs churning, you know. He's used to pushing that Jeep. He's overshadowed by a lot of big names in the Big Ten last year. And the call this time goes to Reggie Brooks, a recent signee of Tampa Bay again because Eric Rett, the contract holdout. So Brooks, who had his problems in recent years with Washington, Santana Dotson makes the stop and gets booed by the Buccaneer fans here in Tampa. Well, let's take a look at Santana Dotson. You know, he's a guy that, like I told you, the season rests on his shoulder. Look, at he's ready to go. Watch him get in the backfield and cause a penetration. That makes Brooks cut. Then he comes off the block so well. That's the quickness and the movement that Fritz Shermer's talking about that he needs inside at the defensive tackle position. Three-yard pickup, so second and seven. Here comes a blitz. Tilt for hit. Gets it off. Allstott's got it. First down. Up to the 48-yard line. Craig Newsom with the tackle. Dilfer took a shot but hung in there. 15-yard pickup. What you had there was a zone blitz. Okay, watch Leroy Butler come in here, okay? And then you have the lineman drop out. Dilfer stands in there, takes the shot, and just finds his open receiver. You know, that's the, the development you want to see in your young quarterback. You know, I said in the beginning of the show, Trent Dilfer's been up and down. And I, I didn't stand alone in that assessment. But what you're seeing right now from him is you're seeing a little bit of consistency and patience in the pocket. You like to see him bounce back after the interception, which really wasn't his fault. It was a deflection off Alvin Harper. They've got a first and ten. Reggie Brooks thrown down behind the line of scrimmage. Brian Williams, who was the real surprise in camp and has been playing so well, makes the tackle for the loss. Yep, Brian Williams, he's out of nowhere. And you know, Mike Holmgren was going to cut him last year. You're going to take a look at him. He's right there in your picture. He's second from the right. He's going to cut. Watch him slide. Then he finds the open. He beats Allstott's block and in the backfield for the wrap-up. You know, he had a groin last year. It was a third-round pick. He had a groin problem. You know, he just wasn't productive. And Mike said, hey, it just took him a little while to catch on. 
because he was from USC or Mike went. That's the only reason he kept them around, but they wanted to cut him. After the loss of six, still for throws. Brooks out of the backfield, can't hold on. I think he hears some footsteps. George Kuntz was right there running up toward him. Yeah, you know, Reggie right there wishes he had another shot at that. It, it, going through his mind right now, did you ever do something and say, oh, just one more time, just give it to me one more time. Yeah, he wants another time right there. You know, but back to Williams, you know, we were talking about with the Williams deal. You know, they were going to cut him, and you know, Fritz Sherman said he played so well in preseason that they couldn't keep him off the field. You know, they brought Ron Cox in to play middle linebacker from Chicago in the offseason. Well, there, he, Williams was too productive, so they moved Koontz back inside, and Williams got to start it right outside linebacker. Third and 16. Dilfer flushed out of the pocket and gets it off. Reggie White right there to try to drag him down. Incomplete. Fourth down coming up for the Buccaneers. Big Gabe Wilkins. Yeah, you see the Green Bay Packers are, are already alternating their line up front there because of the heat. And then there Reggie chases him out of the pocket. And then here comes Gabe Wilkins and closes the whole thing up for him. Gabe Wilkins a big part of this team as you see Desmond Howard back. He's going to have to spell Sean Jones and Reggie White at ages 34 and 33. They're going to need some time to rest once in a while. Uh, especially at 95 degree temperatures and the humidity at about 106. Howard at the 14 quickly brought down. Tyrone Leggett right there again. Two strong tackles from Leggett on special teams. 42 yard punt from Tommy Barnhart. No return. Gilbert Brown of the Packers with a 10-3 lead. Promising career has been really hampered by injuries with a banged knee. They're going to take a look at halftime. Number 90, Darius Holland. We'll get a lot of time now. First and 10 at the 18. Robert Brooks back in the game for the Packers, so that's good news for Green Bay. After taking that blow to the head, Favre throws downfield. He intended for Chamura, but he couldn't quite grab it. A little bit too high from far. We certainly would like to have that one back. Mark Chamura had a great season last year. In his first start, you know, he has a 40-some reception and then goes to the Pro Bowl. A great year. And you can see him fighting his way. He finds a little opening in his zone and sits down, but Brett just overthrows him. And the reason Brett overthrew him was Eric Curry was up in his face. Now, Eric Curry, you know, the number one from Alabama a few years back, hasn't been real productive on the right side. Well, now they're playing left end, and they're really happy with how he's coming at left end. Second and ten, Dorsey Levens, the lone setback. He's got it. Gets a little bit of a hole. Gets up to about the 24. Packer fans always concerned with what's going on with the 49ers for McDonald's game break. Let's go to James Brown. And Mike, how many times have you seen it? You know the cast of characters. Steve Young fakes a handoff in the round to Jerry Rice. He goes in with his 10th career rushing touchdown. San Francisco leads the Saints 14-0 in the second. Back to Mike Green and Bill Morris. Thank you, James. Third and six coming up. Packers lead it 10-3. Two key turnovers from the Buccaneers led to the scores. Bennett, the lone setback. Again, Brooks is back in the game, and Favre's going to have to call a timeout. Green Bay with one left. Mike Holmgren feeling the heat a little bit. Time now for our Affleck trivia question. The last 15 Super Bowl champs have all ranked in the top 10 in rushing. Well, how about Green Bay? Chance of a Super Bowl this year? How did they rank in 1995? Answer coming up. Visa presenting top 10 of rushing. How about Green Bay in 95? Not quite. 89 per game. Their lowest since 58. 28 in the NFL. They've got third and six right now. This is a passing situation, which I think pleases Brett Favre more. Some good pressure on Favre. Gets it off. Complete to Freeman. He's got the first down up to the 34-yard line. 12-yard pickup. And Freeman already getting very comfortable with Favre. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Brett Favre, you know. They have the blitz. Charles Dimery comes off the right side, forces Brett out of the pocket, and he throws the ball on the run. And there's Antonio Freeman wide open. You know, it's hard to cover. See, they had two tight ends there you know, in that possession. 
and it's hard to get coverage on everybody when you have two tight ends. And what you saw that he did, they brought in an extra defensive back and only had three down linemen. First and ten, ball at their own 35, Edgar Bennett. Hit hard at the line of scrimmage and taken down. John Lynch on the tackle. You know, we talked about the Packers running game and the Aflac trivia. And, you know, to me, that's been their albatross in their last five years. That's what's eventually reached up and drug them down somewhere in the playoffs is that they don't have a running game. And the ironic thing is, is they had a 1,000-yard rusher last year in Bennett. Well, they, he must have got the ball a thousand times, but he got a thousand yards. In the 28, you have to have a good running game to advance through the playoffs. Well, a thousand yard rushers, they're not what they used to be with the 16 game schedule. You only have to average 62.5 a game. Reverse. Brooks has some blockers ahead, but a great tackle from Derek Brooks at the 38 yard line. Second year man out of Florida State with a big hit. Watch Derek Brooks. He's all the way over here to the left of your screen, and he's been all over the field thus far. I really like this guy. I think he's their best defensive player, and, and he's got all the ability in the world. Look at him run. Brett doesn't see him, and he gets right by him, and he comes all the way across the field and drags down the reverse. Wasn't fooled at all. And, you know, he, he chased a guy in the other direction a few plays back when he had to go all the way to the other sidelines and tackle him out of bounds. I mean, he's just all over the place. Tony Dungy preaches tackles, smart tackling, and Brooks that time did. Third and five. Far out of the pocket. He's got William Henderson hit for the first down at midfield. Brooks on another tackle, but not before an 11-yard pickup. And they like Henderson. He's not just a blocker. They like the way he can come out of the backfield and catch the football. You know, it's so tough on a defense. You saw Lonnie March, number 51 there. He was out there in space, and he sees Brett running towards the... the, the uh, at line of scrimmage he doesn't know whether to come up he doesn't know whether to stay in coverage and he just left his coverage just a little bit to come up and support brett and he left his man open that was henderson you know so that is so vital all the things that brett can do in the backfield hackers lead it 10-3 a dilfer interception and an ellison fumble led to the points for green bay Barb to throw again little pump out of the backfield got torsey levens plenty of blocking room and Levins still going. Now to about the 29-yard line. Todd Scott helping to chase him down, but a 19-yard pickup for Dorsey Levins. Nice screenplay. An excellent execution. Watch the left tackle, Gary Brown. Watch him set up. Takes Reagan Upshaw, pushes him right by Brett Favre, and then the whole thing sets up. You see Aaron Taylor out there. You see Timmerman. And then Dorsey Levins, you know, they use his speed in the development of the screenplay. And it's been working well for him. It worked for him in the preseason and all last year. You know, the timing on the execution of that thing is unbelievable. First down and 10. Far this time to Bennett. And Bennett spins up to the 26 so much on Gary Brown. And he's a vital player because of all the injuries how's he doing so far well you know i always look at two things when you look at an offensive lineman one he hasn't been called for a holding penalty and two his guy reagan upshaw hasn't had a sack so overall you know you have to be pretty pleased with the play of gary brown this afternoon of course rutgers out for at least the first six weeks michaels banged up may play brown also has an ankle injury he's playing hurt prerequisite to play left tackle for the packers to be banged up second and seven ninth play of the drive four wide receivers and they give it to Dorsey Levens with a huge hole and Levens very close to a first down John Lynch right there on the stop again Packers moving the football on this drive you know I tell you the Green Bay Packers offense do everything to keep you off balance watch Aaron Taylor right there and watch what he does to sap he's going to turn sap and let him run right by him and see the hole open up and then boom there goes Levens right out the gate I mean, I mean, it's so tough on a defense when your offense, meaning the Packers, can do so many things. Last year, Edgar Bennett carried it 77% of the times, but Mike Holmgren wants to split it up a little bit. Levins and Henderson and Travis Jervy will all see some action. Third and one, Bennett the lone setback. Tomorrow in motion. And Bennett's got the first down and a couple more inside the 20-yard line. And there's their number one pick, John Michaels, the 27th overall pick. Starter at left tackle with Rutgers out, but because of that right ankle injury, he's been hobbling around. Mike Holman said he looked like Walter Brennan and the real McCoys earlier this week. 
Yeah, well, look at him. You know, he kind of looks like a rookie. He's standing there lost. He, he, <laughs> was, he was looking up in the stands. You know, he's like, wow, this is, hey, this is the NFL. And then his buddy, Gary Brown, he's out there. He's got grass feet on him. Barb throws, complete Bennett out of the backfield. And Bennett inside the 10. Bennett very good last year, caught 61 passes. And a first, very close to a first down. Yep, let's see if they got it. So a second down coming up for Mike Holmgren. Two-minute warning. Here from Tampa, Packers with a 10-3 lead over the Buccaneers. Back and forth, you know, like one of those dolls in the back of a car window. You know, this is his first game in the NFL, too. So he's all pumped up. Second down and two. Play fake from far. Incomplete. Pete Jackson should have had that one. So a third and two coming up. Watch Brett Favre. He's going to roll out a little play action. Turns the corner and puts it right where he needs to put it, right on the outside shoulders of uh, Keith Jackson so he can turn the corner and go upfield. You know, Keith just wants anxious to get that ball and turn it up and put it in the end zone. Yeah. Get two touchdowns today. He was thinking the six before he got a hold of the one reception. First things first. Third down and two coming up. Packers call their final timeout here in the first half. They lead 10 for it. See that 67% right there? What You know, that's 67% touchdowns. That's not just scoring. That's not a field goal or anything like that, a drop kick. That's touchdowns. Once you're inside the red zone, 67% of the time, they score TD. Third down and two. Five. Connects. An incomplete. Another drop. Antonio Freeman couldn't hold on that time. Marty Mayhew with a strong hit. Yeah, nice close on the ball by Marty Mayhew. And you know, there, you get down in the red zone there, and there you see it again, the Bucks are stingy. They've been down there three times. They've only given up one touchdown. And it's been aggressive play like that. You know, they know the Green Bay Packers are going to use a lot of throws the ball out to the flat, a lot of short routes, intermediate routes. What they want to do is they got to get on there and tackle. They got Once they catch the ball, they've got to close and tackle. Martin Mayhew saves the touchdown. Jackie now with a 27-yarder. And Jackie now two for two, but a penalty marker apparently thrown on the play, so we'll just have to wait. Hendrick says, let's perhaps try it again. And that's the first penalty marker of the entire first half. Walt Coleman, our referee. Yeah, you know, usually in week one, it's so sloppy. First down for Green Bay. Oh, listen to the call here. We have holding on the defense number 73. Pulled a player out of the way to allow another player to go to the ball. Half the distance, first down. Ooh, that's going to hurt him. That's going to hurt him. You know, there you give up the three. And now you have a chance. That, you're going to have a four-point swing. We'll see if we can find it. I can't see from that angle. Yeah, hard to tell there. I can't see anything that derogatory from that angle. You know, that would have to be re very flagrant to get that thrown. You know, a drastic pull of somebody down to the ground. Or, or near block or something along that line. Buccaneers didn't seem too mad at the call, so perhaps as they get a first and goal. Far touchdown. Keith Jackson, his second TD reception of the afternoon. You don't think this guy's been vital to the Green Bay Packers? It was him last year that came in, and towards the end of the season, you know, they utilized that two tight end set so much, and it was that set and that formation that caused the San Francisco 49ers so many problems. The gunslinger, Brett Favre, had 38 TD passes last year. He's already got two, both to Jackson. As we mentioned, Jackson played just nine games in the regular season last year, then exploded, had a great playoff run. And that penalty really hurts the Buccaneers. Jackie on now for the extra point. And it's 17 to 3. Those penalties that kind of make Tony Dungy wish he was still an assistant. Although it was a defensive penalty. You know, for the Green Bay Packers and Keith Jackson, 
but he's just a guy that is so excited to be here. And the reason he's so happy, you know, isn't because he, he, he's starting again. Isn't because he's catching touchdown passes here. It's because of Mike Holmgren. Watch the protection up front of the guys. You know, they're buying Brett time. He gets to sit in the pocket nice. Nobody around them picks his spot and finds Keith Jackson in the back of the end zone. Like I was saying, Jackson's just happy to be here. I mean, Mike Holmgren, if you're ever a player, you get a chance to play for him, which I did for a year. I mean, he's a guy that you just love being up around. He makes practice enjoyable. He makes coming to work enjoyable. He makes reaching the ultimate goal and the things they want to do collectively with the team enjoyable. And you see the smile on Keith Jackson's face. I mean, he was in training camp this year. <laughs> that's got to be, that's a first. I mean, he's been in the league like nine years. He's been to two training camps, and he was at the full training camp this year. He was a free agent and re-signed back in July. That's a nice long drive for the Packers. Went 82 yards, but again, that penalty is what kept it alive and made the difference between a field goal and a touchdown. As Hendrick back on to kick it off. Boy, has he been busy here in the first half. Nilo Sylvan. The rookie back once again for Tampa Bay. Sylvan at his own one. Cuts inside and knocked down at about the 20-yard line. Coming up on Fox. I want to remind you, back in Atlanta, they took home the goal. Now they're really being put to the test. See our winners take on the world's best, Mary Lou Retton, host USA versus the world, the ultimate gymnastics challenge this Tuesday on Fox. Tony Dungy with a challenge here in his first game as head coach, his team down 17 to three. Yeah, you know, and he's got so many young guys on the team, 23 new faces, and he's got to keep them all focused and say, hey, you know, we hurt ourselves, and he can pinpoint the penalties and mistakes that have hurt them. Four wide receivers, but they run it. And go absolutely nowhere. Uh, Sean Jones takes Leroy Thompson down. And the first smattering of boos. Obviously not like that play selection. Well, they need to get the ball downfield a little bit. Get the, the offense a spark. Get them some kind of hope before they go in the locker room at halftime. They have all three of their timeouts remaining. Still for firing downfield. Jackie Harris lost it off the strong hit from Mike Pryor. And Pryor has come up very big here in the first half. Already has an interception. Mike Pryor, an 11-year guy, you know, he was with the Indianapolis Colts for a long time, and he was one of the first players to move in free agency. He's just a smart guy, and he's always around the ball. He plays it smart, and he knows Jackie Harris. They were together up in Green Bay, and he knows what he can take and what he can't take. And what he can't take is that hands full of helmet coming at him when he had that football in there. 32-year-old Mike Pryor, this is fourth year with the Packers. A third and 11 for Dilfer. Has a little time, fires, incomplete. He intended for Carl Williams, and that one a little too high. That's some of the problems Dilfer's had in the past couple of years. Coming up at halftime, which is just a minute and two away. The Dockers, Khakis, halftime, JB and Terry will have all the scores and highlights. Opening day in the NFL, some surprises. Some expected results. Fourth down is Houston. Check that Tommy Barnhart. Desmond Howard on the 27, cuts inside, has a little room, and taken down at the 49. Lonnie Martz slowed him down before Melvin Johnson and John Lynch got him. A 54-yard punt, but a nice 20-yard return for Desmond Howard. And the Packers have 49 seconds, but no timeouts. And somebody's shaking up on the play. Dorsey Levin's shaking up. Packers lead at 17-3, final minute, first half. You know, it's amazing, Mike. When you're playing this heat and humidity, and you're out there giving it your all, you're, you get lightheaded as it is. And then if you take a good blow or you get knocked to the ground and smacked, I mean, you, you just go black. You go black for a few seconds. Gary Brown doing the job. That left tackle, Favre will throw. Packers going to want to try and score. Favre fires downfield. Jackson again. Jackson scampers in. His third touchdown of the first half. A 51-yard scoring play. 
And the Buccaneers absolutely stunned. <laughs> Good red ball. You see him put his guns away? You know, you know, he's just he's just so active and so attentive. The rush was all around him. Up front, Tampa Bay had a fine rush, and he just stuck it there, stayed in the pocket, was cool, calm, collective, and waited until he found an open receiver. And it looked like Charles Dimery blew coverage down there. Some teams would be content going in at 17-3. Not far. Wants to throw it on every down, he says. Jackie with the extra point. And the Packers dominating now. Favre and Jackson connecting for three scoring plays. And it's 24-3 Green Bay. We take a look to the left of your scene. screen. Right there. There's Jackson. He's split outside. And there's nobody with him in the back of the field. Okay, Dimery comes over and tries to pick him up. But then he runs the post. And the free safety, Hardy Nickerson doesn't get enough depth. And there's no free safety in position. Wide open. Obviously busted down coverage. And Charles Dimery unable to make the stop on Jackson near the goal line. Nice mobility from Favre. That's one thing about Brett Favre. I mean, he can throw the ball. His feet, his feet are like crossed and they're up in the air. And he's got one foot in the ground. and He just heaves it. He's got great accuracy when he can do that. Best off-balance thrower in the well, NFL. Without a doubt. Hey, if your kid's going to be a quarterback, you know, you don't want him to watch Brett Favre. Because all his fundamentals, I mean, are nothing that is taught. Everything's taught from the ground up and set up and good stance. Now, Brett Favre has none of that. His feet will be crossed. One leg will be up in the air. Ball comes out over the top, out of the side, underneath. But what is unbelievable is his accuracy and arm strength. The tough offseason for Favre and rehab. But he has bounced back very strong here in the first half. Milo Silver at his own goal line. Trying to cut around and take him down. Roderick Mullen on the stop. Week two coming up on Fox next week. NFL Sunday doubleheader where the Bears battle the Washington Redskins and the Giants take on the Cowboys plus other regional action. All begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific plus the pregame show kicking off Fox NFL Sunday. And next week on the pregame we're special on Deion Sanders and his training techniques an inside look as Keith Jackson obviously trained very well during the offseason and yeah, boy you see that show this morning I, I just love watching that show with Ronnie Lott in there it's even more exciting another defensive guy and some toughness no question still for throws and immediately hit you know, by for, Leroy Butler excuse me Bill no that's right for Tony and his group you know it's a young guys you know they've got to go in at halftime you know they probably can't wait to get him in there at halftime and regroup and say look guys We've done some things well. We've just made some mistakes. Every touchdown that Green Bay has scored has been a breakdown mentally. And, you know, Tony, is, he, he's got to expect this from his group early on. But is, if he can pinpoint and show them, say, look, they scored here because of the fumble. They scored here because of the interception. They scored here because of a breakdown in the secondary. If you, could, if you can show them those things, then they can get a grasp and say, you know what, we're right. Then you go back and show them and say, hey, these are the things we're doing good. Look, we're running the ball. We're pushing our offensive, defensive front with our offensive linemen. You know, we hit some play action. We got the ball to Jackie Harris. Show them the things they're doing good. Get them getting some confidence at halftime and come back out and start over. The turnovers have hurt. The number 88 has hurt as well. Three TD receptions for Keith Jackson in the first half. Yeah, and you know, talking to Keith Jackson, he says between the two of those guys, who's ever got the hot hand? You know, we'll get all get snapped. Whoever has the hot hand is good. Still for the throw. It's complete. Jackie Harris, the tight end, tries to get outside and does. Wayne Simmons drags him down. First down on a 10-yard pickup. Yeah, they, they got to get the ball to Jackie Harris. As you look at their offense, and, and you need a, you need somebody that's a game breaker. And to me, Jackie Harris is that guy for the Tampa Bay Bucks. You, know, you need to get him in the game plan more often. Go to him. You know, you saw a little drag route there, and then you, you're going to have to get him in the hook, and then have him stretch the field. Send him down the seam. He has the speed to go down the seam because he was formerly a wide receiver. Had a career best 62 receptions and 751 yards last season. First and 10. Ball up now, just shy of the 35 yard line. Bill throwing the pressure from White is hit. Throws incomplete. Intended for Alvin Harper and Trent Dilfer, who was sacked quite a bit last season, 47 times, takes a shot from Reggie White. 
Well, one of the things you like when you, when you see the stunt here, you see Reggie come inside, and you, you saw Santana take the double team, and then Reggie comes underneath him. I mean, that's what the use you can get out of Santana Dotson. That's some of the great things you can do. Penalty marker, however, on the play. Holding. Offense, number 60. 10-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. Well, they get Jimmy Pine for holding. Find the left guard. But it's been basically a first half free of penalties. Packers have never been a team that's been penalized. That's what drove Mike Holmgren so crazy last week in that final preseason game. They have not committed a penalty at all here in the first half. First see, they got Sean Jones in there over the guard. He's down at defensive tackle, and then they brought in McKenzie, and he's at right end. That's a new defensive front for him. That's their pass rush front. They're the guys they want out there in the field. That's their best pass rushing front. Full start. Prior to the snap, number 71, five-yard penalty, still first down. That's what the Packer defensive line will do to you. you. Get a little itchy to get it going. Scott Adams placing Ian Beckles in the starting lineup. Beckles hurt himself the other day in practice. Both teams' offensive line a little banged up as they head into week one. Yeah, boy, you know, right now, you know, they just can't wait to get into the locker room and, and sort this thing out. Roy Thompson lost the ball. Dilper picks it up and wisely just falls down. Reggie White right there. Final seconds of the first half. And there are the Tampa Bay fans getting into midseason form. Tony Dungy certainly was not hoping for this type of first half. His team turned the ball over early. And Favre and Jackson connected for Green Bay. Dockers halftime coming up with J.B. and Terry. Halftime at Tampa. Green Bay in complete control. Houston. Don Beebe. A couple of blockers in front of him. Beebe has a little room across the 30. And Beebe brought down at about the 36-yard line. As Green Bay doing a good job in that first half. You know, all the talk of the Super Bowl hype, it's not hype with this team because they are that good on both sides of the football. You know what I'm very impressed with them is, is the fact that they go out there and they've made some mistakes, but they've taken advantage of Tampa Bay's mistakes. You know, this, they look sharp, they look crisp, totally different from the team I saw last week in Indianapolis. And they're certainly confident. They're not allowed to talk Super Bowl. Mike Holman says no talk whatsoever, but they're certainly starting off like Super Bowl contenders. And Brett Favre very sharp already in the first half. Three touchdowns already. He's off and running. First and ten. Packers will start this time at their own 36. Ball to throw right away. Hit hard and sack. Warren Sack, who had an active first half, gets his first sack of the season. Boy, you know, you go into halftime, I said, Tony's going to talk to him, make some adjustments. Watch Chimera right there to the right of your screen, 89. He's going to draw double coverage. That's one way you can take away. They, they went in halftime and said, hey, see the two guys right there? I mean, that, that takes away Chimera. Now Brett's looking around, can't find a receiver, and here comes the rush. Warren Sapp's there to make the sack, and they need that from Warren. Second and 14. Sapp last year. Only had three sacks the entire season, as we mentioned. He was very unhappy with his rookie year in the NFL. And a quick hit behind the line of scrimmage. Sat there once again. This is why he was drafted first in 95. Hey, something went on in the locker room at halftime. I, I know Tony Dungy. You know what he said? He was probably mad. You know, he disappointed. Tony Dungy, okay, he's like someone's mother. When he walks into a room, all of a sudden, you do your best Eddie Haskell. I mean, hi, Coach Dungy, how are you? I mean, because you, you respect him. You respect what he's about, so you adhere to everything he stands for. And he'll look at you in the, in the locker room and say, he won't yell at you. He'll look at you and say, boy, you really disappoint me. And that's about the worst thing you can hear. Absolutely. Doesn't have to yell to get his point across. Third and 17, Favre again under pressure. Gets away, fires downfield. And they say, complete. At the 44-yard line, Antonio Freeman with a terrific catch. 27-yard pickup, and Freeman has been very sharp. Watch Brett. 
you know, you see his feet, did you see him there were just like up in the air, one's on the ground, one's in the air, and, he, and, and they had the pressure coming at him, and he rolls around. Watch Brett Favre. He sets up in the pocket, he looks, it's not there. He feels the pressure coming around him. He tucks the ball as if he's going to run, scrambles out, finds, look at his feet. I mean, quarterbacks don't throw the ball like that. Brett Favre can, and did you see how accurate it was, Mike? <laughs> right on the sidelines, right where only Freeman could catch it. And a first down at the Tampa Bay 44. Warren Sapp limping off the field after that last play. See Freeman's numbers. Penalty markers on the play. As Dorsey Levin gets it down to a 35. But again, markers on the field. Monty Martz on the tackle. Yeah, it's okay to be aggressive. You know, obviously they got pumped up in there in halftime. It's okay to be aggressive, but you don't want to be overly aggressive. You don't want to start the sloppy mistakes again. You know, the jumping offside. Offside. Defense. Number 75, penalties decline, second down. And you saw what happened there is when you jump off sides and your defensive lineman, that was on Curry, it, it, it causes the rest of the team, everybody's in a freeze mode. Uh oh, whoop, something happened. And then before you know it, Levins is out the door and they're not even going to take the penalty. I mean, they, they got eight yards on the carry. Off the penalty, second down and one. They'll mark it at the Buccaneer, 35. Bennett back in the game, the lone setback. Edgar Bennett scampers for the first down. Brad Culpepper to tackle. And Holmgren's really mixed it up with Bennett and Dorsey Levins. William Henderson's got a little time as well in the backfield. Yeah, there you had the two tight end formation again. And as a defense around the league, league wide, okay? Here's your scenario. Defensive coordinators are thinking two tight ends in the game. Anytime a defensive coordinator sees two tight ends in the game, right away you think they're going to run the ball at you and run it down your throat. You look at the two tight ends of the Packers, you better get back in pass coverage. First and ten. Jamara in motion. Henderson. Now it's about the 28-yard line. Nickerson in on the tackle. And they expect a lot from Henderson. Now his second year out of North Carolina. A knee injury in camp last year that slowed him down, but he still played in 15 of the games. A real bruising fullback. But as we saw on one particular play in the first half does a nice job catching the football as well four yard pickup that time second and six okay you saw a couple running plays and they didn't get much how much you want to bet this is a pass from Michael four wide receivers <laughs> this time Dorsey Levins gets the call Levins very close to a first down Nickerson tripped him up well, Mike's testing that line obviously you know they spread it out they have four wide receivers and they get everybody thinking it's going to be a pass so what does he do? He hands the ball up the middle on a little delay to, to Levins and see what he can get out of it. You know, you check the men in the box. And, you know, you try to create your scenarios by personnel groupings. And, Mike, you see three players on, three players off. Three players on, three players off. It really keeps the defense guessing. Third down and two for Holmgren. Says he wants to emphasize the run a little bit more. Favre says that'll change. <laughs> Two tight ends set once again for Green Bay. Favre on the play fake. Upshaw, the rookie, chasing after him. And it looks like he'll be a little bit short. Reagan Upshaw, their first-round pick out of Cal with some good pursuit. John Lynch also right there. And they marked the ball short, you know, and that was a great pursuit right there. I mean, Reagan Upshaw, you know, showing some of his speed. He's a guy who's about 260 pounds. You're going to see him right there. You're going to get him to the get into the mix of things he rushes inside he sees it he doesn't bite then he's back outside watch Chimera Chimera's gonna come up and lay a hit on him to try to protect his buddy they don't hurt me they don't hurt my pal they have high hopes for Upshaw who says playing in the NFL as a rookie is like being a freshman again in college hey but it's that kind of hustle you know that prevented them from getting a first down inside the scoring zone that's just something you like to see out of a young kid 40 yarder for Jackie and Chris Jackie perfect three for three as the Packers continue to pour it on. Just under 10 minutes remaining. Third quarter from Tampa. Green Bay leads 27-3. As it has been a tough afternoon for the Buccaneers, but the defense doing a good job in that sequence. Yeah, you see Rod Marinelli, the defensive line coach there. He's got his guys around saying, hey, that's what I need out of you. That's a little moral victory for him. They come out the second half, and they stop the Packers. Now, let's see if their offense is going to get it on a little roll here. Nilo Sylvan this time decides... I'm not going anywhere. So they'll take it from their own 20. The rookie puts them there. 
great running attack and a physical team that can just dominate from start to finish and uh, wide receivers and tight ends that can make big plays up the field. And uh, hopefully that's what we'll develop into. Tony Dungy's offensive face will be helped by Mike Shula, 31 years old, youngest coordinator in the NFL. On the far right, of course, son of a legend. First down and 10 for the Buccaneers. They trail 27-3. Dilfer fires, complete. Alvin Harper at about the 28-yard line. They need Alvin Harper to get involved. Yeah, they do. That's one of the things they've been waiting for for the last two years since he came down here from Dallas. You know, they got to stretch the field. They got to get the ball deep, and that's what they brought him here for. And Tony, you know, I mean, Tony to me is a breath of fresh air to football. I mean, he stands for everything that is right. You know, he makes these guys pick up their trash in their meeting room, clean their lockers. I mean, clean their lockers, he's telling these guys to do. I mean, that's not military stuff. That's moral stuff. Second and one, and a first down for Jerry Ellison. And you will not find more of a gentleman, not just in the NFL, but in all of pro sports than Tony Dungy. I mean, he's a player's, player's coach. I mean, he demands a lot out of you. I mean, he's a he's humble guy. I mean, I, he, he didn't want to even beat Duke. He doesn't. He has a TV show, a radio show. He said, no, I don't want to call it the Tony Dungy show. This is a Buccaneer show. He's very team-oriented. He's very family-oriented. I mean, can he win with this philosophy? That's yet to be seen. But uh, he's already a winner in life as far as I'm concerned. Dilfer throws again. Complete up to the 37. Mike Allstock out of the backfield. And in the limited time... He's been a part of the football. He's been very impressive. Yeah, they've got to be pleased thus far. You know, they said there was a question mark. They said they like what they've seen of Mike Allstadt in preseason and in training camp, but, hey, he hasn't played an NFL game yet. Well, he's out here today going against a very good NFL team in the Packers, and every time he's touched the ball, you've seen good effort from this kid, and you've seen some good hands and, you know, just good overall play. They've got to be happy with Mike Allstadt. Second and five. Update on Gilbert Brown. Available for duty. In the second half, comes with the knee in the first half, still for throws, incomplete. Good coverage. George Kuntz is right there. Jackie Harris, the intended receiver. Yeah, you know, like I said, Mike Holmgren said, this season is belongs to this guy right here, Santana Dotson. Watch the rush he puts on Pine, and finally gets to Dilfer. I mean, that kind of pressure, that's, that's what they want. That's what they brought him in here. Look at him, right by Pine with a push and swim move, and then lays Dilfer down. And then gets up and it reintroduces himself. Say, hey, I remember me, Trent. Hey, Eugene Robinson told us yesterday, you better pump up Dotson and Brown, Jones and White are great, but that whole defensive line may be the best defensive line he's ever played with, and he's played on some good ones. He's played on some good ones in Seattle. You know, they had Jacob Green and Jeff Bright and Joe Nash up there, and he said this is the best he's ever seen. That's saying a lot. Dilfer has to call timeout, and a third and five as the play clock was winding down. Green Bay leading just under eight minutes to play in the third. Top rookies. Uh, we've got a hot one. At least the best one we've seen so far in week one in Tampa. Mike Allstott, second round pick out of Purdue. Not only the 15 yards rushing, three receptions for 31 yards. Yeah, you know he's averaging over three yards to carry, but I want to see how that degree works down here in this humidity. You know, we could use some up here. I'm beating up, Mike. Yes, you can use some up here. <laughs> Third and five, four wide receivers in the game. Dilford, quick throw, complete. And then he dropped it. Fumble the ball. Green Bay has recovered another fumble. And let's see how the officials rule. Packers have the football. Alvin Harper made the reception, quickly fumbled. Looked like a couple of people standing around, whether or not it was an incomplete pass, but Craig Newsom able to grab hold of that football. Another turnover. Take a look, look at the ears. Take a look at the left of your screen. Watch the ball come in right in the hands of Alvin Harper. He just can't hold on to it. Watch Newsom. Reggie White. Newsom with the initial strip. And it has been a long afternoon for Trent Dilfer. Well, yeah, you know, Trent, I mean, he got the ball there. He's doing the right thing. That's the second time I've seen Alvin Harper have a ball in his hands and not be able to hold on to it. I mean, they paid this guy a heck of a lot of money to come down from Dallas. You know, he had 20 points some yards per catch when he was in Dallas, and then he went down last year to 13 yards catch. Now he's having trouble holding on to the ball. Three turnovers for Tampa Bay, none for Green Bay. Out of the backfield, far able to complete to Keith Jackson. Three touchdowns in the first half for Keith Jackson. First time he's caught three TD, three TD passes in a game since 89. That was back when he played for the Eagles, did it against the Redskins. 
you know, for the defense, you know, I played on teams like this where your offense just can't seem to get things going for whatever reason. That's when you really got to stick together as a group and say, hey, no matter what, guys, no matter what, if we have to find a way to score to win, we got to do it. Second and five. Barb, quick drop, fires downfield, caught Antonio Freeman at the 20. Todd Scott on the tackle, but another first down, a 21-yard pickup. Freeman, very impressive here in week one. We well, saw what happened there's Antonio Freeman I mean he just got behind the zone I mean when you have a zone defense there's a cushion in the zone and it's right behind the linebacker and you see Nickerson there tried to jump up and get it because he's not deep enough I mean that was the problem and Antonio just sat down there right behind the linebackers in that little cushion area between the linebacker and the receiver Brett found him laid it in there very nice and he lets you know what it is too he was their leading receiver in preseason and there are the numbers this afternoon two tight ends once again in the game a lot of movement at the line of scrimmage, far throws. Chamura's got it, still chugging. And it takes four guys to halt his momentum and maybe six to tackle him. 18-yard pickup, a first and goal coming up for Green Bay. Yeah, and that was a uh, chugging Chamura, <laughs> as you refer to him as. Hey, getting any other tight ends in the mix of things. And, and you know, the tight end situation, there he is right here. You're going to see him break down the field and Brett finds him. But the thing about... The thing about the tight end situation is, you know, they were so deep at wide receiver going into training camp. Oh, there's some great protection right there. Look at up front. Look at the guys up front. Look at Frankie Winters. Aaron Taylor. Look at him. There's no movement in front. Brett has all day back there. First and goal. Barb. Quick pass. Dorsey Levins. Touchdown. Packers pouring it on here in Tampa. And the formation thing, I'll get back to you, getting back to that formation thing. I mean, that two tight ends in there. I mean, who do you take care of? Who do you watch? Who do you guard? I mean, really create the dilemma for the defense. And they are so vital. I mean, nobody has this combination in the NFL. No one has the two tight ends that the Green Bay Packers have. You know, I said in training camp, they were stacked at wide receivers. Of a lot of talent and a lot of depth. And they got nicked up. You know, they got Derek Mays hurt and all that. And they, they couldn't get. They only have three really healthy ones right now. But I don't think it matters. I think Mike Holmgren was going to go with this two tight end package because it is so strong. Jackie's extra point is good. Brett Favre of the Packers. A strong performance this afternoon. Marv here with his fourth touchdown pass of the afternoon. Dorsey Levins hauls it in. And Green Bay dominating 34-3. For the Buccaneers really struggling. Dorsey Levins, the latest Packer to get into the end zone. Lost his starting job. Not happy about it, but caught the latest TD pass from Brett Favre. As Nilo Sylvan going nowhere. Craig Hendrick with another strong kick. And the Buccaneers will take it over at their own 20. Next week, America's number one pregame show catches up with primetime as he shows his private workout. Join Terry Howie, JB, and Ronnie Lott for a full hour of NFL entertainment and information. Coverage begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Then there's a giant game after that at 4 o'clock. You know, it's a doubleheader weekend. So you get a whole day of Fox. And the only problem with us working with Fox, I, I miss that pregame show. <laughs> I like the 4 o'clock game today because I get to catch it. Have you heard of VCR? There you go. Can't go for it. All start out of the backfield. Breaks the tackle and gets up to the 30. Boy, he is impressive. George Kuntz finally brings him down after an 11-yard pickup. And, and there again, you see the display of the toughness and the aggressiveness. And here's a guy, it doesn't matter to score. And, and you look at so, a guy like that. Watch him. He's going to come out of the backfield, and Dilfer's going to find him out there in the flat, give him the ball. And you look at that, and he doesn't care to score. It's 34 to 3. Is this guy going to quit? No. And Tony Dungy is going to see this thing through. He's got 23 new guys on there. And if you keep giving the effort that this guy gets, if you can get that from all of them, things are going to turn at some point in time. Also, has got four arms like Popeye. Yeah. As Dilfer, under some pressure, fires, intended for Jackie Harris, poorly thrown ball that time. So second down and 10 coming up. No question Trent Dilfer misses Eric Rett. Rett, his first two seasons in the NFL, both 1,000 yards plus. He was a workhorse, and you could always rely on him. And even though you've had some nice work from Allstott, Rett is an established runner already, and they miss 
his ability. Yeah, they miss him. He's holding out, and you know, they, the word is that they're not going to trade him. You've heard trade talk. They are not going to trade him. Absolutely not. They want him back in camp, then they'll resume the contract negotiation. And when you have a quarterback like Trent Dilfer, you need to alleviate some of the strain on him, and you need Eric Red for that. Second down and 10. And that's Roy Thompson, who gets up to about the 37-yard line. Thompson trying to help fill the void of Brett. Richard McKay, the general manager, said absolutely will not trade him. He's under contract. Tony Dungy just coaching like he doesn't exist because that's the way he's got to go. Yeah, Tony's a no-excuse guy. I mean, he's not going to sit there and say, well, uh, we didn't have this, we didn't have that. He and his team is going to be responsible for each and everything that occurs. Third and five. Dilfer he gets hit again as he throws the football incomplete. And this Green Bay rush, very strong. But a penalty marker. You want to talk about strong. You should see Reggie White on that play. He's playing against Doug Reisenberg, you know. Doug used to play with the Giants, and Reggie was with Philadelphia. I mean, watch him get off the ball here. Watch there. Watch him go upfield, and then watch the club and just sends Reisenberg sprawling. I mean, that's what Reggie White does so well. Sinks the rip, and bang! Here comes the club. Sends him going here. Right to the ball, right to the quarterback. I mean, that is classic Reggie White. So it goes against a rare penalty by the Packers. White's going to get a rare breather. Says he doesn't want to play any less than he did last year but understands that he's going to need a little something extra for the end of games and certainly the end of the season. An amazing, amazing effort. They get a first down off the penalty. Dilfer looking downfield, complete Alvin Hopper. Hopper down at the 42, Doug Evans on the tackle. Right now for a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown at the Fox Television Center. Like Rod Woodson was lost to the Steelers on the, in the first game last year, this year's number 95 in a black jersey, Greg Lloyd, who goes down on this play in the third quarter, torn patella tendon in his left knee. He is lost for the season. Pittsburgh also lost the game. Let's take you back to Tampa Bay. Mike Green and Bill Moss. Boy, that is awful to start the year. That's tough, you know. Pittsburgh took it blows in the offseason, losing a lot of people. They didn't need that. First down and 10. Dilfer again hits. He releases. Picked off. Leroy Butler. Still going. Now he's got some blockers. And finally they blow it down. Leroy Butler. But a penalty marker is down. Let's see what the call is. Dilfer threw one interception early in the first quarter. It was a deflection off Harper. And apparently against Green Bay. You're going to have an illegal block probably on that return is what it looked like. That was the vicinity and where the return started. We have a personal foul. Low block, number 53 of the defense after the interception. 15 yards, the first down, Green Bay. We're well, going to take a look here. You know, they're trying to get things going. You know, they pounded the ball at him. They got that. Now they got it Alvin Harper pass, and he's going to move the ball downfield, but right there on the back side of his arm, did you see Sean Jones drag his right arm down? That just didn't give him enough to get the ball to Dave Moore. Leroy Butler, the interception, fourth turnover for Tampa Bay. It's all Packers. Welcome to George Cones. Just as it was a judgment call, but still, all in all, he's below the waist. But still, the Butler interception stands, and Edgar Bennett gets the call, cuts back. And brought down. Brooks on the tackle. You know, one of the things they stressed all offseason on French Shermer with the defense coordinator, he said, how can I get more takeaways? But, you know, he says, bring in Santana Dotson, get me Eugene Robinson. That'll solidify our defense. I mean, they figured those were the two key areas that they needed shored up. And then the results today sure looks like they get a lot of takeaways this season. He felt they had a lot of drops last year by the secondary that should have been interceptions if they played well enough. Turner, his third year with the Packers, 22nd in the NFL. Barb complete up to about the 26-yard line. Antonio Freeman with his sixth reception of the afternoon. 
Brett Favre, you know what I was talking to you about. If you're, if you're teaching your kid how to play quarterback, don't watch this. But if you want to see an unbelievable athlete, watch Brett Favre. He gets back there, and then watch him start backpedaling, backpedaling, throws the ball. Did you see his feet? They were crossed, and he threw the ball, and he threw it in traffic and right on the money. And that's a strong arm, let me tell you. Anytime you can do that, I mean, usually they say your strength comes from the ground up from your stance. Not in Brett's case, that's all wing. He's completed his last eight passes. Edgar Bennett has some blockers ahead of him. And Bennett tripped up at about the 34. Donnie Abraham, one of their draft picks with the tackle. Favre has been absolutely spectacular. Well, look at the numbers. And again, he's coming back from that addiction to the painkillers. Also, had one of his close friends killed in a car accident, in an accident which his brother has been charged in. It has really been a difficult offseason, yeah. but he said he's still mentally he's ready. Yeah, he is ready, and he wants to prove to everybody that, hey, he can come back and have another sensational year. He's off to a great start. Second and three. Dorsey Levens hit at the line of scrimmage and maybe gets a yard. As Marcus Jones, the other first-round draft pick of the Buccaneers, in 96, makes the tackle. Jones out of North Carolina. Broke a lot of LT, Lawrence Taylor, sack records with the Tar Heels. They have high hopes for him as well. Figure he'll probably move into the starting lineup fairly soon. Third down and one. Henderson in as, as the fullback. Bennett cuts inside. He's got the first down up to about the 38-yard line. So Edgar Bennett will move the chains to Green Bay. Jones again in on that tackle. 34-3, Green Bay dominating, and turnovers have been a huge factor. Four for Tampa Bay, none for the Packers. As the third quarter comes to an end here in Tampa. Packers lead at 40, 34-3. Fox NFL Sunday continues after these messages from your local station. Packers certainly showing their wares here in the opening week. Brett Favre throws, complete first down, Robert Brooks. At about the 43-yard line, knocked out. Brooks knocked around in the first half, had to lead the game for a little bit, but he's back and Favre connecting. 17-yard pickup. There you see the Green Bay Packers offense right on pace in the rushing department where they were last year. 89 today, and they averaged 89 yards a game last year. You know, what is, I'm surprised they're still passing. I mean, if I'm... Coach Holmgren, I want to go out there and I want to. The area of concern is the offensive line. So I want to run the ball a lot more. You got the lead. Let's see if these guys can start gelling. But at that time, Bennett has a huge hole, cuts inside again. Melvin Johnson finally brings it down at the 31, but not before a big game. 15 yard pickup and another first down for Edgar Bennett. And they gelled there. <laughs> that's, that's what you want to see. But it's a long season, and you know you can pass the ball. You know you got Brett. You know, you know you have uh, the two good receivers, the two good tight ends, and, and Brooks. And now let's see if he can run the ball. And they're going to try to do that right here. You see they spread him out a little bit, and then there's the trap, Aaron Taylor. And Edgar Benner up. Oh, look at the nice block on Brooks also. That's good stuff. You know, they get the mixed direction stuff going, the traps, slide. First and ten, ball at the 30. Bennett again. Gets around. And Bennett finally knocked down. Lonnie Marks among those in on the tackle. You know, Bennett's not the most spectacular running back, but you know, he catches the ball well out of the backfield, picks up blitz as well, and he does not fumble. Coming into this year, 684 consecutive rushing attempts without a fumble. Although it's tough when you go against a guy like Hardy Nickerson. Well, you see Hardy, you know, he, he here comes it's, there, uh, Henderson tries to block him. He jumps over that, then has to take on Timmerman and stuff the whole thing up. I mean, that's Hardy Nickerson. He's still in there battling around. And the Packers, you know, did you see what that play was there? That's the old Packers of the 60s. That was a student body right. They pulled a guard. <laughs> they pulled the two guards on that play. And they tossed it outside. Second down and nine. Kamura goes in motion. They stay on the ground. Bend it again. Maybe a couple of yards. He's wrapped up. Dickerson in the vicinity. So a third and nine coming up, and the Packers, who come into this season with a lot of pressure on them, again, because of the expectations. Awful lot of people picking them. 
And then the Chiefs also being picked on the cover of Sports Illustrated this week. Well, uh, hey, that's two good picks. You know, if you're in the uh, uh, business of the prognostication, I mean, hey, <laughs> they're two teams you want to go with. Now, obviously, Kansas City had 13-3 last year, and they seem to have everything in place. And the Packers, you know, they pick up a few guys, and they seem to have things going. Third and eight, four wide receivers, and Favre's going to call timeout. Yeah, we'll take a break. Still early fourth quarter, Mike Holmgren's team dominating. Long afternoon for Trent Dilfer and the Buccaneer offense. Only three points. A host of turnovers, four of them. Green Bay, meanwhile, scoring at will at times. They lead 34-3 on this third and eight. And Brooks able to get it. Lonnie Martz right there. Yeah, that was a quick screen out to Brooks out in the flat. And, you know, they had to get, try to get the receivers down there to occupy the linebackers. But Lonnie March wasn't fooled at all. So fourth down coming up. Chris Jackie time. And Jackie, who's a free agent at the end of this year, very open about it. And talking about how he wants to make some big money. This is a 46-yarder. And he wanted a handoff handle the kicking duties too on the kickoffs. And Jackie with his first miss of 1996. Very few things have gone wrong for the Packers. They still lead 34-3 after the missed field goal. I guess to enjoy it. Um, and then reality kind of set in that, hey, uh, you can only dwell on it for so long before the next season starts. And no one remembers 20 years from now who was the MVP in 95. They remember who the Super Bowl winners were. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's the most important thing to me. What a performance on week one. And there's the numbers for Brett Favre, who's very motivated to get his team into the Super Bowl. As Tampa Bay will take over on first and ten. Reggie Brooks that time on the carry, but a flag on the play. And the four touchdown passes, most for far on an opening day performance. This one's going to go against Green Bay. He says he's motivated not only, though, by the loss to the Cowboys in the NFC Championship game, motivated by what happened to him in the offseason, the fact Illegal that some people think. Play. Defense number 55, five yards from the end of the run, first down. Bernardo Harris on the penalty, but he's also motivated because of what happened to him with the the drug addiction to the painkillers to prove to people that had no part in his performance. One thing about Brett Favre, Brett's a guy that you don't ever want to tell him he can't do something, he can't beat something, because he'll come back to get it. Gilbert still in the game, Reggie Brooks has a little room outside, and Brooks with a good run, close to a first down. Doug Evans in on the tackle, along with Eugene Robinson. Eight-yard pickup. You know, to run the ball, is that's what Tony Dungy wants to do. You know, you have to look at it in 34-3 to with the offense that the Bucks have. They're not going to be able to, in all likelihood, come back here and just air it out all over the place and get back in the game. That's something I don't see with this offense. So what you need to do now is now you need to sort out and see what guys are you going to need. What guys are going to be there for the duration. What guys are going to have the mental toughness to sit in a situation like this and compete for this team. Bill for throwing on second and one out of the backfield. Almost picked off. Greg Newsom was right there, and he had no one in front of him. Brooks could not hold on to it. It's all Craig Newsom, terrific rookie year last year. Fritz Schirmer, the defensive quarter, says... He has nothing to worry about with this guy. He gets better every time he steps on the field. On the field, yeah, not every game. He gets better every time he steps on the field. That's a heck of a statement. He's a young guy, but they said, you know, he's only a second-year guy, but he doesn't have the mentality of a two-year guy. This guy is a true professional. He comes to work, he straps it up, and he is all business. Third and one. All stop. Appears to have the first down. Depending on where they mark it. So the officials have a little work to do. And those are the numbers of the 
five replacements, so all but Tracy Johnson's got a chance to carry the football with no Eric Rett. You know, you, you look at the numbers there, and you have to say, oh, wait a second. The only thing that is different here are the running backs. This offensive line has been together for five or six years. Are they, well, they have Pine in there now for Dill, but that's the only, they think that's an upgrade. So this offensive line is the same offensive line that's been blocking for Eric Rett. You know, Eric Rett's always put up big numbers. Every time he touches the ball, he's a real workhorse. He's a guy you can give him the ball 30 times a game. He's really going to be, he's really going to produce for you. And no one has really stepped up and shown me that, you know, this is the workload guy. So you have to take a combination of all those yards and dispense them out throughout the, uh, the remaining five running backs. But what does that actually give you? That's the question you have to answer. Does that really, is that, what does that give you? Certainly makes it tougher for the running backs to perform on a day when you're trailing big throughout most of the game. They're going to go for it on fourth down. You saw Walt Coleman with how much room to go. A little less than a yard. Brooks has the first down and more down to the 37-yard line. So Reggie Brooks with a strong run. Brooks' his fourth year out of Notre Dame. Had a great rookie year with the Redskins. Over 1,000 yards and over 5 yards per carry, but then had some injuries, some fumbling problems, and not a great relationship with Norv Turner, and he was waived, especially with Terry Allen being the workhorse, and now with an opportunity to do things here in Tampa. You saw the coach giving a little pat right there. You know, you have to look for positive things, and that play was positive. You know, you have to look at that and say, hey, that, I like what I saw there. Dilfron first down, under pressure. Fires off balance down the field. Jackie Harris turned the last second, and a penalty marker, Eugene Robinson, was right there. Robinson trying to say, no, not me. Let's see what the officials say. Well, they, they were down there. Jackie Harris, Trent Dilfer, was waiting to find him, waiting to see if he could get it open. And he hit the sidelines, and then he broke up. There was some incidental touching going on, and that's legal, as, as they tried to gain position. You know, but defense, number 41, first down. As they got turned around two or three times, Eugene Robinson's hands were just probably on him a little bit too long. They called him on the play. Two-time pro bowler, formerly with Seattle. See his hand? See his hand up there? His left hand was yep. up, up right on Jackie's uh, shoulder pads here, right on his collar of his shirt. So automatic first down. Ball at the 15. Jackie Harris in motion. Dilfer with time, throws, picked off. Leroy Butler. Butler's still going. Butler's running all over the field, and I think he's tired. Finally runs out of bounds. Courtney Hawkins right there, and that tells it all for Trent Dilfer. 49-yard return for Leroy Butler. So Butler led the team in interceptions last year with five. Picks up his second as Green Bay continues to roll. Shermer, the takeaway, something he wanted to improve upon in 96. He's already almost a third of the way there. And you can see his plans working. And it, Leroy Butler has two interceptions, and then Mike Pryor has one. You know, everybody's getting in the mix of things, and it's all because of the rush up front. You know, Brett Favre will sit down. Jim McMahon in the game. Travis Turvey on the run. His first carry of the afternoon gets down to about the 43-yard line. So far finishes up with a four TD day. And 37-year-old Jim McMahon now his 15th year in the NFL. You know, when I was going back earlier and I said that Brett Favre is the most aggressive quarterback I've seen in the last 10 years down for down. I don't think there's anyone else that comes close. At times, Elway can be as competitive, but Brett is the most competitive. And the guy that I referred to 10 years ago, I'm thinking 1985, Jim McMahon. This guy right here. Remember him, the Chicago Bears? He'd do whatever it took, too. Loves playing in Green Bay on the second and five. William Henderson on the pitch. Henderson with a first down. McMahon says he's still in Green Bay. He'll get some hate mail from some Packer fans that will not forget about the Bears. But he says he knew he was a Packer when his kids asked him to get one of those cheese hats. <laughs> yeah, you know you're really converted Wisconsin when you start getting the cheese hat going. 
Look, there it is. Look. See, they don't care. Who would have thought that there'd be a cheese hat in a McMahon household? <laughs> but he also says, despite having some arthroscopic knee surgery back in July, he feels he's in the best shape he's been in in a long time. He's hardly played two snaps last year, two games the year before, so the wear and tear in the last two years haven't taken its toll on him. Big hole, flag on the play. Derby gets down to the 27, but penalty markers. All right, now let's find some exciting finishes from week one. Let's check in with James Brown. Mike, I think it might have been in the NFC Central today as backup quarterback Brad Johnson in for the injured Warren Moon finds Chris Carter with his game winner, a 31-yarder. Vikings win it 17-13 in Minnesota. Let's take you back to Mike Green and Bill Moss. Thank you, J.B. Top to bottom, certainly one of the toughest divisions last year. Very, very well bunched up. Yeah, and it's going to be no different this year. The old black and blue division. Remember when the black and blue division used to be the uh, the Smash Mouth guys, the Nitschkes, the Butkuses, the the Gale the Sayers, the running backs, all that stuff. Now the black and blue. The only thing black and blue in this division now is maybe quarterbacks' arms and receivers' hands. <laughs> I mean, this NFC Central really airs the ball out. Marcus Jones, the first-round pick, getting ready. First to 20 off the holding penalty. Jervy trying to get outside. Excellent pursuit. And he's knocked down. Marcus Jones really chasing him there. Doing a good job. Travis Jervy, the guy from the Citadel, you know, military school. You know, and Travis is a real fast guy. He ran this offseason. He ran in the uh, NFL's fastest man competition. And, and, you know, a Citadel guy, but he's got a surfer mentality. Mike, Mike always makes fun of him. It's kind of ironic. You know, a Citadel, a military guy, and a surfer mentality. It's like a G.I. Joe doll, and you pull the string and it says, what's up, dude? <laughs> Third and 22. Dorsey Levins is checked back in. Check that second down. McMahon goes to Levins. Evans cuts his side. It's down about the 43. It's been a tough, tough day for the Buccaneers. Tuesday is a very important day, the future of their franchise, as the voters will decide on a community investment tax, a half-cent sales tax referendum. 10% will go towards building a new stadium, the rest going to public schools and law enforcement. Tony Dungy says it's not been a distraction, but a no vote on Tuesday could mean that they just may move the team. And right now, it's, it's up in the air in terms of all the polls that they're taking. You know, and it's kind of a crazy thing. You know, you'd hate to have it to come down to that. Then you'd end up with a situation like the Houston Oilers are in. And you have like 12,000 fans coming out to see you the rest of the year. McMahon with the throw. Looks downfield. Deflected. Jeff Thomason. Do they call it a catch? Yep. Off the deflection. That other tight end on this team, Jeff Thomason. 24-yard pickup. Yeah, Demetrius DeBose, the middle linebacker, you're going to see right here, he gets a lot of depth, and he gets a hand on the ball and tips it, but to watch the awareness of Thomason. Thomason breaks down, sees the ball, and comes back to it. Well, look at him, right here. Look at that. Well, that's good stuff. That's good stuff, man. Boy, are they stacked at the tight end position. Look at the hands. Look at that. Going down on the ground. Look at those eyes looking at the ball, following them right into your hands. You know, they teach you. Follow the ball into your hands. You see Thomason there. Even the third tight end is terrific. First down, ball at the 19. Just over four minutes remaining. It has been all Green Bay. Travis Jervy fumble the football, and the Buccaneers have recovered. First turnover by Green Bay. Todd Scott. So Scott able to come up with a football. Tampa Bay with some rare excitement. They still trail 34-3. Bay off the Green Bay turnover. Dilfer still in the game, fires complete. Davey Moore, the tight end, up to about the 22. And you might say at a 34 3 game, why is Dilfer still in there? But Tony Dungy wants to give confidence to his quarterback. He knows he's his guy. Well, one of the things that I see in Trent is he's assuming too much of the responsibility for everything. I mean, a quarterback, I mean, you can't just worry about everything that's going on. You know, he sees interceptions, he throws himself down on the ground, nodding his head. Now, I mean, he has to worry about the things that the quarterback, that Trent Dilford does. That's the important thing. He's got to pay attention to that. Second down, 
and five. Gilford, high pass, Jackie Harris can't hold on. Yeah, that's been part of the problem, his accuracy, there's not consistency there. Throwing a lot of high balls. Well, there you see the other tight end on the other side of the field. What a performance from Keith Jackson. You know, going into the game, you know, I thought that one of the guys that would have a big game would be Jackie Harris. I kind of like the matchup with Harris's speed against the Green Bay linebackers. But, you know, <laughs> tables turned on you. It's been the Green Bay tight ends that have really been a key to this whole success of the Packers today. Third and five. Quick drop from Dilford. Intercepted again. Lamont Hollenquist off another deflection. The sixth turnover for Tampa Bay. And Trent Dilford's just got to be beside himself. You know, he brings some of the things on himself, but he doesn't bring all of the things on himself. And, and you know, now he's out here today with all the interceptions. I mean, watch 21 Craig Newsom make a play on the ball. That was fabulous. That was fabulous. He was in the right position. He squatted on the receivers. He came out, and then he, when, he, when the ball was thrown, he made his break. Beautiful stuff. And that's why they love number 21 so much, Greg Newsom. I don't have to go any further than the turnover stat to make the reason why Mike Holmgren's relaxing here in the second half. He was very upset after the final preseason game as Dilfer throws his fourth interception of the afternoon. Holmgren said because they played so poorly in that last preseason game, he was able to say things to the team that normally he wouldn't be able to. Like, let's get your act in gear. Don't start believing all the press clippings. I think, believe me, a whooping like that and the, the way they played in Indianapolis last week is the key for their success here today. I mean, you wouldn't believe what a, what a game like that can do to a team. I mean, you know the season's coming up, you know you just played bad, and you know that you're going to have a higher level of intensity out there. So everything raises up, and really, the Green Bay Packers really look sharp today. They look focused. I mean, Brett Favre looks just, uh, their timing is perfect. Got to feel that Dotson is pretty happy he's on the green side of the field instead of a former Buccaneer. After four years with Tampa Bay, he left the Bucs and is playing on a team that has been very, very impressive. Well, anytime you get to jump ships from, from a Tampa situation to a team that has the potential to go to the Super Bowl, you got to be happy. Derby fumbles again, and the Buccaneers recover again. Donnie Abraham, the rookie, able to pick it up, and Tampa Bay will take over. And Jervy's going to try and fight for some playing time with two fumbles here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not, yeah, that's not really good. You don't want to see those things. I mean, the team has looked sharp and crisp in all aspects. And then the last two times Travis has touched the ball, it ended up on the ground and in Tampa's possession. Tayoka Jackson appeared to knock it loose, and there's the third-round pick, Abraham. Able to pick it up, Abraham, out of East Tennessee State. This game presented by the authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the National Football League is prohibited. Just under three minutes remaining. Fourth quarter in Tampa. Green Bay dominated. Dilfer still in the game. Under pressure. And falls down. Tripped up. The pressure right there. Gabe Wilkins among those. Darius Holland also in the area. Actually tripped over his center, Tony Mayberry. And when you're tripping over your center in the pocket, boy, that, that tells you you really got a push coming up the middle from the defensive line. And that's the big thing that the Packers have been able to do today in my opinion. Six-yard loss. Milford throws, almost picked off again. Greg Newsom's been around the football all afternoon. Intended for Carl Williams. Well, you saw the break on the ball. I talked about it last time uh, when he batted the ball away. You saw it there again at that time. That was almost Trent's fifth pick. You know, that was the long out, the deep out. And that, it takes a strong arm to do that. But, you know, it's a long ways across that field. And when you're going to wind up and throw that ball, if you've got a quick corner like Newsom, you know, chances are that they can break on it pretty good. And if it's not thrown perfect, they can get picked. Third and 16. Still for Feeling the pressure again. Fires. And a terrible pass. And again, close to another interception. Lamont Hollenquist again in the area. And Dilfer really hearing the boos. Something he's 
gotten accustomed to here in Tampa. And Tony Dungy's going to have to build them back up before next week. Now Tony Dungy, it's this time that you want to look at your team and see what you have. I mean, you're turning over, you're bringing new guys in. You need people to buy into your system, to buy into your philosophy. That's what Tony's looking for right now. Hey, when the chips are down, who's going to be with you? Desmond Howard at his own 41, runs backwards, breaks a couple of tackles, tries to get outside, still going. And Howard, an impressive run. Tyrone Leggett knocks him out of bounds at about the 43. 42-yard punt and a 16-yard return for Howard. Two-minute warning from Tampa, Florida. Packers blowing out the Buccaneers. White and the Packers, they'll enjoy breakfast tomorrow. Leroy Butler, a couple of interceptions. White, the usual pressure of the backfield. Eugene Robinson, glad to be a part of this Packer team. Two minutes to go. Jim McMahon in at quarterback. Far throwing four touchdown passes today. And Dorsey Levins gets up. Dioka Jackson in on the tackle. But it's a long, long season. And for Green Bay, home opener against Philadelphia next week. Then at home against San Diego. And then on the road, three straight games starting with that Minnesota and at Seattle. They've got the toughest schedule in the NFL this year. Uh, according to victories, according to last year's victories, they play the toughest schedule in the NFL. Brett Favre was commenting on that. You know, they said one of the things was coming down here early, then having to play again in Dallas. And, you know, he said, somebody doesn't want us to win at all. But I'll tell you, the way they played today, you, you really have to sit there and say, Mike Holmgren has himself one heck of a ball club. Not only the toughness of the opponent, as McMahon, the Dorsey Levin, but which was one, penalty marker on the play, but on two different occasions during the season, they have three-week road trips. They play on the road three straight weeks, two different times during the course of the year, and, and that's very difficult. Yeah, that's why, you know, another thing they were losing to is... Prior to the snap, number 73, five-yard penalty, still second down. Another thing they alluded to was today's game, on the road in the division. That's one of the things you talk to your team about, the head coach has always stressed. We have to be able to win on the road in the division, and then they got an early victory down here against Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay is going to get better. You know, so, but they got down here and they got themselves a quick one early in the season. And, you know, they're well on their way. They're 1-0 and in, in the NFC Central in first place. Tied for it anyhow. Second and 12. A little over a minute remaining. Dorsey Levens, Marcus Jones, hits him right away at the 46. Jones has been impressive here in the fourth quarter. Corey Dowden who paid his dues in the Arena Football arena league, league in the CFL. He played down here. He right? played for the Arena League in Tampa Bay. That's a great story. You know, they signed him last week prior to the Indianapolis game, like two days before. You know, they needed some depth at their corner, and they, they signed up, and he made a big play on special teams. Came down and made a stick, and we were talking to the PR department. William Henderson down there in the field. I'll get back to that in a minute. From stock car racing to races on ice, Mobile One has never let a driver down. From 30... In the final minute here at Tampa. Dorsey Levin's trying to go a couple of different ways. Finally brought down. Herman Smith among those in on the tackle. And it has been a tough head coaching debut for Tony Dungy. But he is... Still got a long season ahead. Couple of road games coming up. Starts off with two Central Division opponents at Detroit next week. And then in Denver. Very difficult schedule to start. But he's not going to lose his patience. And I think that Tony knew, you know, coming into this game. He knew what he had. He knew what he was going up against. And I don't think deep down he expected to win. But he's looking for answers in this game. You know, it's the building step. He said the Green Bay Packers are a blueprint of what he wants this team to be. You know, they started out, they made some changes, they were losing programs, they became a solid team, and then they became a playoff team. That's what he wants to do down here in Tampa. Hentrick puts it into the end zone on the fourth down. And with two seconds remaining. Tony Dungy, though, in what we've seen in the past 15 years as an assistant, whenever he's on a coaching staff, the team improves. He is a class act and a terrific football man. 
And there's no question they've got a good man in Tony Dungy to head them in the right direction. And they got a good man over on the other sidelines, too, in Mike Holmgren. I mean, two of the greatest coaches, I think, if you're going to play for, you want to play for one of these two guys. I mean, they really fundamentally, they know what's going on. And as far as relations and how to treat the guys, they're two of the best. Mike's off to a good start, and he has a good ball club. And his team performing brilliantly here this afternoon. Reggie Brooks on a final carry, and that will do it from Tampa. They've got high expectations, and he's got a big challenge ahead of him, Tony Dungy. But the two head coaches, good friends, a tough way to start for Dungy, but Holmgren's team, as we mentioned, brilliant in their opening game. Everybody has respect for Tony Dungy. Big victory for the Packers in impressive fashion. They blow out the Buccaneers 34-3. We'll be back. <laughs>